coming up and tell you the fascinating story of a paralyzed mother who won a legal battle this week to see her kids. Her kids were born triplets, mm -hmm. born back in 2006. During the birth of these triplets, she suffered a stroke and became a paraplegic. Her, she and her husband divorced, and for the last five years, she's been fighting for the right to have some sort of custody agreement with her husband to see them. She, mm -hmm. she doesn't get to see them. This week, a judge in Los Angeles gave the okay. She can see them. A lot of people are saying it's still not fair. She should see them more. Right. A lot of questions as well going on there. We're going to talk about that in just a bit. She uh, it can only communicate by blinking her eyes. This, this issue that she faced during delivery has uh, basically taken away so many of her capabilities, but she has That's been true. fighting for this for four years now, and we're going to talk about it coming up shortly. For some of you, your local news is next. Lawyers are calling it a milestone for the disabled. After a court battle she has fought since her youngsters were born, a severely paralyzed woman has won the right to visit with her four-year-old triplets. Terry McCarthy has the story. Abby Dorn gave birth to triplets almost five years ago, but during the delivery, excessive bleeding starved her brain of oxygen. Today, she's paralyzed. Her parents say she can communicate by blinking her eyes. A long blink is yes, they claim. A short blink is no. And they say she wants her kids to visit. The law is in California that parents are entitled by law to reasonable visitation with their children unless a parent can show detriment. Her ex-husband contends Abby is in a vegetative state and seeing her would be harmful to their children. But now a judge disagrees, warning Abby one week's visitation with her children every year, a monthly Skype call, and a shelf in the children's home with photos of her. This is an astounding victory. Case law authority. The judge ruled the children need a relationship with their mother, that even if she can't interact with them, the children can interact with her. The ruling does stipulate that the father should be present during the visits, and Abby's mother should not. He's not opposed to them seeing their mother. He would like to be there. What he's opposed to is the extended family trying to speak for Abby. It is a heart-wrenching case that lawyers say will set new precedents for the rights of the disabled. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Los Angeles. And joining us now are legal analyst Lisa Bloom from Los Angeles and psychologist and early show contributor Dr. Jennifer Hartstein is here in New York. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Lisa, let's talk about the legal aspects of this first. As Terry just uh, said in his piece, I have to ask you what you think. Will this case set a precedent for cases involving the disabled? Well, legally, it does not set a precedent because this is a trial court decision and only appellate level decisions set legal precedent. But I think it does set a precedent in terms of hearts and minds across the country because we've all followed this case. And if a woman who's this severely paralyzed has the right to have her children present, at least sometimes, at least under these strict conditions, I think that gives hope, hope to millions of disabled parents. It appears the father is still going to fight this in your mind. What are the chances that this case will be overturned? I think the chances are low. I happen to know Judge Schaller. I just tried a case in front of him a couple of months ago. He is a very thorough, meticulous, careful judge, very fair to both sides. He obviously considered all aspects of this case in reaching this decision, which in many ways is a compromise because the father gets a lot of what he wanted, too, in terms of the conditions that are imposed on the visitation. Yeah, from a legal aspect, uh, Lisa, were you surprised at the outcome of this case? I wasn't. I think this is the right outcome. Biological parents do have a right to have visitation with their children unless there's a detriment to the children. And millions of children do have disabled parents, and they learn how to cope. Uh, in this case, there will be an adult present, the father. He can help the children uh, get through the process, help them understand this is their mother, yeah. their mother who loved them very much, and help them understand how to deal with a disabled parent. Uh, Jen, let me bring you in and talk about the human aspect of this. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a, a disabled mother here. Do right. you think a week, a year is enough time for her to to develop some sort of bond with well, these kids? Well, it is that in combination with this monthly Skype call. So there is a combination of the two things, so she'll have some contact with them. It's better than nothing before, yeah. you know, it was being withheld. So it's at least something where they can get to know her, have interaction with her, and have connection. And as they, they get older, they'll be able to choose how much more or less of that that they want, we C hope. Considering the mom is severely disabled, I mean, how hard is it going to be for her to develop some sort of bond? Well, I think kids. the fact is these kids can play on the floor and she can watch them. There is something there with, that she's aware of, we know. So she can be at least present. They can get ta tell her stories. They can talk with her. It will be wonderful for them to have some sort of bond. It can be built. It's not the same as a traditional parent, but even with her disabilities, there can be something there. Now, the father's contention was that the kids seeing their mom in this state, it would be detrimental mm -hmm. to them. It would, it would harm them for the rest of their lives. What do you think? Well, I think there is a yes and a no to that answer, right? The yes part of it is that we 
have to be really mindful that these kids never think that it's their fault. It did happen during childbirth. We have to make sure that they are okay, not knowing that it's, you know, they had nothing to do with it. It was not their fault. That could be the part that could be detrimental. The wonderful part of it is they learn how to accept people with disabilities. They learn how to be much more accepting in the world. They learn how to really love people with good and bad parts of them, all of that stuff. So it can really be very helpful and actually make them better, more well-rounded kids at the end of the day. Jen, uh, Lisa, let me go back to you for, for just a second. Do you think the judge made his decision in part because of the way that the mom was disabled here having a stroke during childbirth? Well, that certainly gives her a lot of sympathy, but ultimately, I think, no. He looked at all of the facts of the case, and he decided that this mother has the right to see her three children under very narrow, very cautious circumstances. That's the ruling, and I think that's the ruling that's going to be upheld. As Lisa said, the, the, the dad will be in the room. Mm -hmm. Jen, let me ask you, the dad will be in the room when the kids are visiting their mother. What, what, what advice, if you were to, to counsel this father, what advice would you give him? I would encourage him to let them have that time with her and not kind of take it away when they leave. So I think it's really important that they figure out how to have a non-traditional co-parenting arrangement where mm. he supports that bond being developed. And when they get home, doesn't badmouth, doesn't talk badly, doesn't say anything that's negative about the mom, but it supports the children's exploration of a relationship with her in some way. Okay. Jen Hartstein here in New York City. Lisa Bloom in Los Angeles. As always, thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Russ. Thank you. And now here's Rebecca.